I think it's all New York Times this week, because, you know, quality news, right? Quality <laughs> news. Rule will end food stamps for 700,000. The Trump administration putting this forward to be stricter on work requirements. These fucking assholes, really, there are people in a room that are like, oh yeah, we're fucking obliterating people around the world. Our bridges are all collapsing. There's too many people eating in America. Have you noticed that? We really gotta stop the poor from getting the spam, all right? If we just put a wall between the poor and the spam, I mean, they're going after food stamps and its job requirements. You know, the, the, the change is expected to shave nearly $5.5 billion from food stamp spending over five years. $5.5 billion. Luckily, stopping the poor from getting food will have no other repercussions. <laughs> but it will save us a lot of money, so that's really great. And uh, $5.5 billion, which is roughly the cost of, uh, roughly the amount the, the Pentagon spends on a toilet seat, roughly. <laughs> Roughly. I mean, honestly, 5.5 billion. The Pentagon's budget is 800 some billion. They, they, they were like, if we can shave some billions off of people eating so we can drop six more bombs. Uh, it's fucking incredible. And of course, here, now here's where, that's all how the Trump administration sucks and how our government sucks. This, this is how the New York Times sucks, is that throughout this article, of course they don't mention that guess what? Getting jobs, that's racist, all right? It's, it's much more difficult to get a job. They've done studies and, and you're 50% less likely to get the first call for a job interview if you just have a black sounding name, yep. all right? Yep. So I've always said, Fucking, if it's just a phone call, fucking lie with the name, all right? Lie, just uh, flood the job market with Chads and <laughs> Ted's and whatever the fuck. Like. <laughs> and then when you show up, you can be like, yeah, I don't know, the, uh, my, my friends call me Whitey McWhiteface, I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. It's just a nickname that's stuck. Um, but yeah, and it's also harder to get a job if, guess what, you're poor to begin with. Which, who's on food stamps? Poor people. Because, guess what, you can't have a fucking nice suit if you're poor. You, you know, there's a lot harder that you can't have your fucking eyebrows threaded, right? <laughs> That's a big problem. It's tough to get a job with crazy eyebrows. <laughs> oh and then, the, my, the, this is my most important point with job requirements, is what about the idiots? <laughs> This country has a lot of idiots, all right? We are, we are fucking full up with idiots. And, and, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but yeah. And like, look, they're just, I'm not trying to be hard on idiots. We just have a lot of idiots. They're born idiots. Like you just, it's harder to get jobs. What? There's people out there. That, there's a lot of people that watch the Adam Sandler movies. Like there's people out there. <laughs> fucking idiots. It's not so easy. You can't just oh, go get a job. All right, so then this other article, Captive of CIA Sketched Agony of His Torture. Now, this is an incredible story to begin with, but uh, in a ray of torments, prison drawings by first target of enhanced interrogation. He literally drew the pictures of how he was tortured. I, I mean, the first thing about this is this guy knows Americans. He was like, well, if I tell them how horrible it was, they, they won't do dumb to get it. But if I draw a little picture, a little cartoon, Here's how they were had my hands. Then people will be like, all right, there's some graphics involved. Now I can read this. It, I mean, it's so fucked up. Um, but also, so the New, this is, the New York Times is great at this, right? They'll make you feel horrible for this prisoner, which you should feel horrible for. Uh, but, and they'll do this pearl clutching article about look at how he was tortured, look at what we used to do. Yet, they, uh, there's no mention of the fact, what do they do all day, every day? Support the CIA. Everything about the CIA. The CIA has never questioned. Anything they ever fucking say is gospel to the New York Times. But then, over here, fucking years afterwards, they're like, this torture thing wasn't cool. <laughs> and it's like, well, maybe stop supporting their every word then. They, you know, did they, did they d d defend John Kariaku who revealed the torture program when he was locked in jail? Fuck no. The New York Times was like, yeah, fucking throw away the key. But... <laughs> Here they are, feeling bad for the torture victims. That's classic New York Times. They, 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 they don't show the, the background of the story, the deeper level of it. Here's another one where they don't show the deeper level. And this is a big front page uh, fucking spread about uh, students who have you know, either been killed in the opioid epidemic, lost friends in the opioid epidemic, been locked up because of the opioid epidemic. And again, very touching article about how horrible things are for all these. These are high school fucking students and how horrible it is. But 
Meanwhile, the New York Times will support the big pharma system at every turn, you know, support uh, ads to consumers, which is why this is happening, because every time you turn on the TV, they're like, fucking get some pills. And you, you're like, all right, I'll go get some pills. And <laughs> they support locking up victims of addic addiction all the time. Like, they're not really criticizing that most of the time. So they support all the background stuff, but then they're like, look at the, it'd be, it'd be like if they, supported, if every day they had articles supporting uh, thrusting your hand through a plate glass window. <laughs> and then they did an article where they're like, uh, cuts are up this season. <laughs> More people are cut, it's really tragic. <laughs> you know, like, like if they had ads for a guy slamming people in the forehead with a two by four, and then they were like, for some odd reason, there's bruises going throughout our society. I don't know. It's a bruise-heavy society. Huh? This is uh, the Saudi, they, they did a, a big article on Saudi Arabia's uh, sport washing, they call it. This is a wrestling match in Saudi Arabia. And it's about how Saudi Arabia's now got all these Western sports coming over to cover up their crimes. You know, because they're like, look, we're cool. We got, we got chicks wrestling, yeah. <laughs> we're awesome, everything's fine. <laughs> And the New York Times is right, this is horrific. They're, they're doing all kinds of horrible things in their country, they're causing a genocide in Yemen. But the New York Times fucking hardly reported about the genocide in Yemen for years, for years. So the, the New York Times is whitewashing Saudi Arabia. They're as guilty as the fucking wrestling. Like, they think that wrestling match is less guilty than the New York Times for whitewashing Saudi Arabia's shit. No, and, and then the other thing is, uh, you know what else we, 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 where else you see sport washing? America. <laughs> you, what, what are the ads you see during all of our goddamn sports? Military, the jets fly overhead, the fucking recruitment, recruitment, recruitment. You can't get through six seconds of an NFL game without there being like, hey, send your eight year old into battle. <laughs> so, so our sports are used to sport wash our fucking war criminal acts. Like, the same idea, but New York Times is like, this Saudi Arabia is not cool, man. Not cool. 